everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Happiness Hour. Every Wednesday, photographers meet here to connect, inspire, and create. Our guest speakers share their images, a little bit of inspiration, and their favorite tips and techniques to help you improve your photography. The schedule for our upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com, as well as the links to previous sessions on YouTube. Tonight's guest is San Francisco Bay Area based street and urban photographer, Marion Mao. Marion is a freelance photographer whose urban landscapes are edgy yet polished. His photographs are often dark and moody but Marion finds light in unexpected places that make his photographs look timeless. In tonight's presentation, Street and Urban Photography, Marion will talk about how he captures the scene and he'll share a few of his post-processing tips to help you add depth and character to your urban landscape images. If you're on Instagram, look for him at Mal Marion, or you can reach him through his website at malmarion.com and I will include the links in the show notes. So first of all, let me welcome you to the Happiness Hour, Marion. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I kind of introduced myself a little earlier and said, you know, I know you don't know me, but I've been kind of watching your work for a couple of years now. And um, if anybody right now, as you're sitting in this in the room, people, go to his Instagram feed because you're gonna see his whole, he's got a whole gallery of just beautiful, beautiful um, images. And they're all, a lot of them are the cities that we um, visit because they're just, you know, great cities from Chicago to New York to even Austin, Texas um, are on his website. And I don't even know that you did that on, I don't think you knew where I was from. Um, but oh, no, I just, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I thought it was really kind of, um, convenient that he posted yes. an Austin photo for us. Um, but your, your work is beautiful. And it's, it's very, it's something I don't do. I don't do a lot of urban. And I don't do a lot of street photography. Um, and so I really was interested in having you come because it's, it, you're adding a different um, uh, genre of photography that I don't know a whole lot about. And I, I really do appreciate that you, you're taking the time to come and share. So I just skimmed your bio a little bit. Um, is there something that you'd like to share that I might've missed? Or can you just tell us a little bit about yourself um, and, and how you got started? I, I'm not sure if this is your full-time job. I know you do a lot of freelance photography. So um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. Um, so hi, everybody. My name is Marion. And um, I, I became um, a full-time freelance photographer about um, two years ago, like right before the pandemic happened. Yeah. Like a little bit right before the pandemic happened. And um, uh, my freelance work in, is mainly like, uh, you know, like family portraits. Um, I'll do like maternity shoots or, you know, dating profile, like lifestyle photos. And um, late last year, um, I, I suddenly got like requests for, for weddings. And I was kind of shocked because I was like, I don't even ever like share anything that's not like my own, I guess, like artwork that I want to share, like my street stuff or whatever. So I didn't know, um, like, why would you ask me <laughs> to do a wedding for you, whatever? But then like uh, the, the most of the time, like they tell me that like they, they kind of just like the aesthetic that I bring, like um, just darkness and just moody vibes and and so um, I've been, I've, so far this year, I've, aside from, you know, just the regular uh, photo sessions, I've, yeah, I've been, so I've been doing weddings and I can't say that I really want to continue doing that because it's a lot of pressure and I don't have a team. It's just me. 
And one of my friends that I trust, that's also a photographer, that's a second shooter. And then like, I, I have to do, like, I have to process everything. And it takes, it's, it's a long, it's a long, long process. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys would know. And a lot of pressure. Um, and well, yeah, I mean, that's just my freelance stuff. That, that's what I've been doing uh, these past two years. But um, why uh, my what I love to do is photograph things. And um, I started off kind of like as um, you could say like a cityscape uh, landscape uh, photographer. Um, and then I slowly developed into street uh, I would say like around 2019 or something around there. And I've been doing it ever since. And I think throughout this whole time of like experimenting with different kinds of photography, I think street photography for me is like, this is what I love to do. And this is also why it kind of ties into why I also like found out that like, I have been posting street photography and it, it's kind of like weddings a little bit because you're capturing these moments, especially like the ones that are candid that nobody really sees except for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's the beauty of it. Like, <clears throat> like I, my main thing when, when it comes to street and weddings is like to catch like, yes, of course, you'll be like, oh, you can smile and all those poses. But it's like those seconds in between where people transition to. If I say like, oh, please smile here or whatever. Like it's those seconds in between before they pose for it that I feel are the most authentic. And that kind of translates back and forth with the street and like weddings because um, a lot of the street photography, like I like environmental things. But obviously there's gonna be people in it, but it captures like a whole a whole vibe, like a whole different kind of ambiance. Especially when you when you're when you can like put your own edit on it. And uh, later I'll show you guys kind of like what I mean by that. So yeah. Well, I you know, I'm I'm looking at your your page and I'm just fascinated by how each picture, even though it's a different place, a different, um, a, it's a different scene, but I can look at your work and feel like I can almost recognize it. You know, it's, you have a signature, um, whether you really, whether that's by intent or maybe that that's just your style. And um, it, it, even though it's dark, it's edgy and it just, I don't know, it really speaks to me. And, and you put a little bit of action into those photos, whether it's someone just walking across the street or whether it's the movement of a, a train or a vehicle or um, just the activity on the street. And um, hoping that as you walk through some of the images, um, you'll share a few tips Absolutely. for somebody like me that I don't even see, I see those things and it's just so chaotic and I don't know how to like yeah, how to extract course. it and make it like beautiful. So with, with that, I'm just gonna hush it and give that time back to you so that you can get started. Do you wanna go ahead and share your screen? Go ahead. That was so like, San Francisco. <laughs> yes, this is, um, let me see. I, have a, I, I selected um, about a little over 10 images that I would like to share. And it goes kind of like from my recent work all the way to maybe like three, at least around three years ago. So it's kind of like you can see, you know, like progression or, you know, just how things evolve, you know, as, as, as you know, we continue our journey on whatever we want to do. So this, this first one is uh, <clears throat> within the past month. Um, and it's on a rainy, foggy day, which is my absolute favorite. Like I'll be out there, like I'll wake up in the morning 
around like seven o'clock. And I'm out there like all day until dinner time or whatever. I'll just be out there as long as I can. <laughs> as long as it's like raining and dark and, and foggy, I'm, I'm out there. And um, this one, <clears throat> um, what I love about this one right here is obviously the cable car is, is, is classic. Uh, San Francisco gives you that vintage feel. Um, I mean, it's just classic. I mean, look at it. I think it looks awesome. It's very nostalgic feeling back to, you know, um, the early days when of San Francisco, you, these were like the main um, sources of public transportation. And um, another thing that I love about this is you can see the Bay Bridge in the background. And there's a lot of bridges in the Bay Area. And <clears throat> of course, probably the most famous one is that red one the golden gate bridge one and but i i it doesn't it is i mean i see it so much that i kind of just take it for granted but basically the bay bridge is is kind of like another version of it kind of because they both have the pillars and like the suspension whatever but i like it because it's so gritty and if you look up close i don't have a photo of it but when you if you go up close it's like really gritty and like it's like metal you see all the bolts and stuff and i love it and um, one of the main things in um, this photo is that that I love the most is that if you look on this image, like on the right side of the cable car in that window, you can see um, this old man or this old gentleman. I don't know if he's old. I can't. I mean, he looks he seems to look old, an older gentleman. And um, he kind of just has like like this expression on his face, like, you know, he's been through a lot. And, and this is my own interpretation, obviously. Like, it looks like he's been through a lot. And I feel like um, on a rainy, on a gloomy day like this, he's just chilling there thinking about life and just reflecting back on, you know, all the things that he's been through. And that's how I see it. And I think in terms of street photography, when you look at it, it captures a scene with with people in it. And then it's up to like the viewer to kind of like have their own story in their own mind. So like this photo to me, that's what it meant to me, but you know, it can mean like a million different things to everybody else. So I think that's one of the main like beauties of street photography is there's just like a million stories because we don't truly know, like, you know, who they are, what's up to us to, to capture, you know, to kind of just interpret it in our own ways. And um, <clears throat> the lenses that I like to use, especially for this one, I, I used an 85 millimeter um, prime. And what I love about the prime ones is that <clears throat> they have wider apertures. So I have my 85 millimeter, um, I think it's a F1.4. So it that, that the depth that you can catch um, with, on what 1, 1.4 aperture is is insane like how i could separate this cable car and the whole back over there looks super super blurry and so that's one of the things that <clears throat> for street photography if you need to really like primes are generally really fast so you know you need a you need you need your camera to lock in and focus real fast everything moves like it's just like life so like they're not going to pose for you or anything like you it's like you either get it or you miss it and um yeah i mean if anybody has questions in regards to this uh photo here i i'd love to answer them or if not um we could move on to the next one yeah just yeah go ahead and if there's something that pops okay. up in the chat, i'll definitely um interrupt you especially if it's on a specific um photo um I saw a note in here. Where did it go? It was from Jamie. She just said the elderly gentleman is a nice extra grab in this photo. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, had you not, this is where I'm not so uh, observant. Had you not pointed him out, I don't think I would have noticed it. Yes, it's, it's, it's a lot of it is like, <clears throat> it's like a little, the little details. Like I, you kind of just want to like, especially with street photography, like you never know what, like, you know, generally what the person is trying to photograph. But if you look 
at like the little things and stare at them like sometimes like you'll find things that it would just normally just kind of pass you by yeah yeah it's um sue, sue does have a question what f-stop yes. um she says what f-stop with a cable car what do you know your oh. stop, your yeah what oh my F-stop? settings on that yeah. i use yeah all okay, right so this might sound weird to you guys but um <clears throat> i shoot everything wide open so like if my lens is has a 1.4 i'm shooting at 1.4 i don't care if if it's like midday or not like i'm gonna do it okay like that's just how i like to i like to shoot okay yeah so that was your 85 1.4 yes okay okay all right um so i'll move to the next one and here we are another gloomy can you guys see this uh-huh Okay, another gloomy rainy day. Um, this one I really like. Like it kind of just happened. Like I don't I usually I when I'm out shooting, I don't really plan for compositions. So if I see something that grabs my attention, I'll work around them, this the subject to 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 frame my composition. So it's kind of like on the go. Like I never plan like, oh, like this is the frame that I want as obviously like when I used to do landscape, that's what I do. Like, oh, this is the spot, that's the frame. And we're gonna just, um, you know, kind of stay within this area. Like when I'm shooting street, like I'm wandering for hours around the city, like nonstop walking. And if I see something I like, <clears throat> I'll move around the subject to, to make a composition like on the spot. So with this, these two people under <clears throat> the silhouette of these two people under the umbrella, like they were sharing one and it's, you don't see that often here. So I thought it was pretty interesting that there's two people under and bro, it's like a nice little silhouette. And I was actually, you, if you look at like, you can see like this, this street like slants down. I was probably down like a whole block down there. And I ran, I saw them and I, and I seen them turning, like walking up this hill. So I was down there and I literally ran like through, I just ran as fast as I could I, in front of them. And then I just, I kind of just kneeled down and, and then I, obviously this tree was, this tree here was blocking me, but I kind of thought it made like an interesting frame to add like that extra bit of depth in it. I kneeled down, um, took like, and my camera's always on like medium to high um, burst mode. So, Cause like, <clears throat> you know, I gotta like within this one, like them walking up this baby block here, I probably have like 20 shots of them and I kind of pick out like which I guess walking stride that that I think looks the best and I thought this one did and so I just wanted to share that like um you know for street you I've like my process I pick the subject first and then I work around the area to find a composition um and this is my own personal strategy. I'm not, there's no like real, like, you know, strategy to do it. You just, you just go, go out there and be as creative um, as you possibly can. So I have a question. Yes. Um, they obviously, if they didn't notice you running past them or ahead of them to get in front of them, they had to have noticed you when you were photographing them. Oh, they, they for sure saw me. Yeah. then they probably thought like who is this weirdo like <laughs> it was it's, it was actually it doesn't look like it but it was pouring like who's this weirdo like running like crazy in the middle of the street with the camera like just and then the, yeah they saw like sometimes I don't care if they see usually like I try to be as stealth as possible but then this one I was like I I just sprinted for like 10 seconds with all my gear like I don't care if you see me, like, I'm just going to get the shot and it is what it is. And that's how it goes sometimes. Um, there's a, a question that popped up and, and yes. maybe we'll address it later, but Jame is curious, if you're shooting wide open, do you make it moody after the fact? Is that part of your processing or are you shooting underexposed? It's really, generally speaking, like this was, I think this was around like, 
oh i would say like like after like new like a little bit like after past noon so like it was actually really kind of bright even though it's foggy like you know how the light just kind of bounces off the fog and it becomes it, it's actually pretty bright and um at 1.4 like i usually have my shutter speed this shutter speed was probably at like 2500 or something like that and <clears throat> as long as i have like the subject in focus um i can post process and make everything darker but as you could imagine like the background you could see like even though I made it darker, it's it's like really, really blown out. So I kind of like tried my best to recover as much of the background detail as I could. But you could see that the subject, which is these two people on the umbrella is like super crispy, like they're sharp and like the contrast is great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move on to the next one. And this is at uh, this is it was my visit. This is um, in Austin, and I had I stayed there for I think three days. And this is my second time going. I got the first time I went, I got some nice ones, but I had to go back because it was raining. So I was like, I have to go back. <laughs> like I might not get this chance for a long, long time again. And um, <clears throat> so the this is obviously this is the capital and. Um, I got down super, super, super low. Like I was kind of like, almost like my whole body was just laying on the floor to get this. Like, cause I like the depth of <clears throat> the foreground. It looks, you know, and it just adds that, I don't know. It's like a nice little foreground when you really don't have anything there. So if you get low, it kind of looks, you kind of just fill the frame with, with the ground. And it, it was perfect because of the leading lines it led, led straight to the capital and obviously the um <clears throat> the subjects here and they weren't these people weren't this couple actually wasn't um like the main people that i wanted to get there was actually like a wedding i think it was kind of like a military wedding going on and it was like behind me and i tried so 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 hard to photograph them but <clears throat> the photographer saw me and they were giving me like dirty looks. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I know how it feels. So um, I didn't want to disrespect, you know, the photographer or the couple that was getting married. So I just, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna turn around. And with my luck, these, these, this couple was actually going to that wedding. And I thought it was like extra nice because it was a dark and gloomy day, but they're dressed up super nice. And with the stroller, I was like, this is perfect. And <clears throat> after I got the shot, I was like, I can just, I can leave now. Like, I'm happy. <laughs> um, so there's a question in here from Mark. Yeah. Um, because these faces are recognizable. Um, do you ask for any, I don't know if you sell your images or if, if you plan to, but do you oh. ask for any type of model release if you if you do plan to sell these? Uh, no, I don't actually. A lot of my photos, um, if you can recognize the person, I would not really sell it. Okay. I wouldn't sell it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they are, it, it is recognizable, but at the same time, like, you would have to like zoom in so, so, so much to identify them, like precisely, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm not gonna ask for, I wouldn't ask permission to post it like I do on Instagram and share it because <clears throat> it's not like, it's not illegal to right. take, I could take photos of whoever I want in public, like in there, you know, of course I'm respectful. I'm not gonna just, you know, whatever, but like, if it's just, they didn't even know I was like taking photos of them. So um, I didn't feel like I offended anybody or, you know, caused any trouble. So, um. That's, um, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll move on to the next one, which is also in Austin. This one, um, I was, it was funny, like, it was 
obviously it was pouring like i've never i haven't seen it pour like this since i was in asia like within like five five minutes like everything was flooded like it was just raining like crazy the, the raindrops were huge i was like this is crazy and i wasn't even really planning on shooting but i was <clears throat> i was at the store which was right behind me with my wife she was shopping and it just started raining like crazy i was like you know what i'm just i don't want to look at the stuff anymore i'm so i'm just going to go outside and whatever i see i'm just going to try to photograph and i just turn to my left and this guy's just walking in the rain and i was like this guy and he's like walking in the center of the on, on the side but i was like you, you just like asking me to take your photo right now so i did it mm -hmm. and i think it turned out great because <clears throat> i love it when the raindrops are super big and they just when and you shoot the photo and it freezes it you can see like all the little specks of rain like you can tell like it was like a heavy heavy um downpour and i just like the i mean i just got lucky that day and a lot of times street photography is just being at the right place at the right time and a lot of luck um so yeah so that's that one right there well um on behalf of the people that live in Austin and Central Texas, we would like for you to come back because we need more rain. <laughs> oh, really, you guys? Oh, because in California over here, like it's so dry, like it doesn't even like that. Last time it rained, like that's why I'm like I'm out the entire day because I was like I don't know when it's gonna happen again. It could be like yeah. several months. So, I love Austin, by the way. It was super fun and. Um, like, I'm not going to lie, like barbecue is not really like my, like my main like thing that I would like be like, oh, I have to eat it right now. It's just, I'll eat it if it's there. But then everybody was telling me like the barbecue in Texas in general, I guess it's just like on a different level. So I was like, I'm going to put that to the test. And I forgot which restaurant we went to, but it was absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was like the food. I mean, the food there, I love it. And I had a, I had a great time. So nothing bad and the people were so nice like just strangers were really nice it's and i feel like reason because from my experience in sf like nobody cares about you like it's kind of like you know it's just different like the vibes are totally different so i had a blast yeah austin uh well texas in general is pretty friendly but austin is a is a great three-day weekend you can you can cover a lot of ground in three days so yeah um I loved it. Yeah. Okay, so in the next one here. So this is just a frame I captured on a, um, a foggy day on the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, if you're not from the Bay, you, you wouldn't know, but in the summertime, it's super foggy here, um, it's, you know, most of the time. And it's a nice little... It's um, it's like nice for to cool down the heat, and I thought <clears throat> I really like this one because I I watched this lady like walk past me, and like she was just stopping like every once in a while and just taking photo. I don't know what she was taking photos of, but what 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 made me like grab what grabbed my attention was I really like her hat, and it was pinkish and it had like that you can as you can see that nice little ribbon on it so like little things that catch my attention that it's just like eye pleasing to me like I'll, I'll sometimes i'll like stalk somebody for for a few minutes i, I like I, the most i've done was like maybe like five blocks but this one i watched i watched her pass me i was like okay whatever whatever do your thing I'm just going to capture a moment right like i don't want her just walking and not doing anything like and i saw her taking this photo again. So I kind of just crouched down. I mean, not crouched. I leaned against the, the, the side over there to grab the, this foreground. Like it kind of leads to, to, to her hands and the camera, like which the action she's doing. And <clears throat> it was just like a nice little moment. I like the way she's dressed. Um, and it just captures the essence of summer here in the Bay Area. Well, the, the colors in her hat, um, as I think it was Jamie said, goes nicely with the bridge, but um, the strap on her 
on her bag is perfect. And then that, you know, the pinks and the purples in her coat and her hat, it just, she just tied it up in a nice little ribbon. Frame. Yeah, it was just like, I have to take a picture of her because she looked like, I just, it was just like, she just caught my eye and I just, I had to, I just had to. So um, a lot of the times that's how I find my subjects. Like whoever's wearing like, in my opinion, like the most flashy or most, it doesn't even have to look good, but if it looks like interesting yeah, and it grabs my attention, like I'm probably going to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, only, only to take a photo yeah just to take a photo but you won't know you you most likely won't know but you might okay yeah and um so the next one this one was in chinatown new york um i, I was there um, february this year it was the the it, it's like it looks like rain but it had just started like snowing and <clears throat> This was probably like 10 or 11 p.m. at night. I was like, I have to go out. Like I saw, I was like, okay, it's raining, cool. And then I went out there and I started seeing snowflakes. I was like, all right, this is it. Like I have to, I'm gonna stay out like all night now. And I just happened to see this guy. And he's not that interesting, but sometimes um, these these like frames or scenes just happen like spontaneously like I turned around I saw him I was like you know what I'm just gonna take this photo like I didn't think anything of it like I'm, I'm just gonna take it just to take it and especially because like I know like the street lights especially at night if it's raining or you know just things in the sky snowing like it really brings out the the details of you know the um of the environment that's happening and i and I said, I took the photo just to take it. Like, I didn't even remember I took this until like one day I just started like slowly looking through like my previous catalogs and I found it. And it was like a little gem to me because I was just like, I was just going to discard it. I didn't, but then sometimes like <clears throat> you find, you like surprise yourself. Like, I didn't even know that I took this shot here. And this was one of them. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. Like I was like the composition, um, everything just looked real nice to me. It was a, I guess, like a lucky shot. Yeah. Before you go any further than this, um, yes. Susan, Susan wants to know what kind of set, well, first of all, I'm assuming you shoot handheld. Yeah, I shoot everything handheld. Okay. Um, so Susan's curious, what settings would you use with a night shot like this? Okay, uh, Susan, uh, I, I, I kind of remember what I've done. I, I have an, a solid idea here. I, this was a 35 millimeter prime. I shot it at 1.4. Okay. My shutter speed was probably around like two or 300, like as low as possible without like any motion, without any blur. Yeah. And with a wide, wide lens, like 35, it doesn't need to be like high or anything. And my ISO was probably around a thousand. Okay. And that's what happened here. Okay. All right, and um, and I really like the little reflections on the on the ground here. It gives that true grit, and especially with the trash, like it gives the whole like you can just be like, oh, it's a gritty scene out there. Um, that's when trash is actually good, as <laughs> part of your <laughs> foreground, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And um, I'm bringing you guys to Chicago. Yay. I was there <clears throat> earlier this year as well. Mm -hmm. um, this one was also handheld. Was And I, had, I shot this one with my 24 millimeter prime at 1.4. Okay. And um, I was probably standing at this the same exact spot for about two hours because this train is like obviously like coming and going coming and going but like to get the motion and and to time it perfectly with somebody like in between the the connecting cable cars was like not easy like i filled up like half my sd card just trying to get one shot yeah um, and then 
Yeah. And then to have her, I'm assuming it's a her in red to go with the Chicago. I know it was perfect. I saw, I saw in this, it was, a, this is actually a child. And on the left, you can see Celia, whatever his parents yeah. and they're eating lunch or breakfast or whatever. That's that's a one in a million. So that brings Jamie's question. Yes. Up front. Uh, are you shooting continuous mode? Um, and yes, I have like my little manual focus, like right in the center where people stand. Like I had a position like close to the bench in the center already. Mm -hmm. And I'm just shooting on like probably mid continuous mid, like mid burst. Okay. And my shutter speed had to be like a lot slower than usual to capture like this train moving. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, and especially in like, this is like, it was really bright, but overcast. It's really hard because it's not at, like at nighttime where it's a lot easier. Okay. So the daytime ones are a little bit more tricky, which is why I chose this one. And I really, I call this one red riding hood because this, he has, this kid has the red, with red hood on and they're riding the train or whatever and so it was a nice little touch yeah it's, it's beautiful so it made me feel a little bit better about myself how many did you um shoot to get this one beautiful shot this i was so this is funny because the night before this i was already there for like two hours it was freezing good but thank goodness they had like this little heat lamp like right under where you could sit like you know like on my side so I went back later on. I think this was like and like lunchtime or something. And I and I came back <laughs> for like another two hours. So this the daytime one was a lot harder. And I I probably had like 600 shots. Okay. And literally, this was the only one that I deemed like worthy of like keeping. Yeah. And so it's it's a lot. It's a lot of patience, yeah. just with as with anything else. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the way I shoot birds. So you're, yeah, shooting. like that's, I, I can't imagine trying to catch, uh, shoot, shoot a bird. It's crazy. <laughs> no, this is crazy, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to go next. Um, we're back to San Francisco and yeah. this, this one, um, is like really special to me because I think this was like 2018 or something. And it's when I first actually started started getting into street photography so this was like one of my earliest shots of street photography and um it's a pretty classic frame like it's not like you know you it's been photographed so many times but what made me um what's why is this is so special to me is that that lady that's getting on the cable car <clears throat> she looks like Ms. Doubtfire if you pull up Miss Doubtfire right now, like the outfit is almost the same. And they have like the same, she has white hair. She looks just like her. And it was like so convenient because Miss Doubtfire was filmed in SF. Yeah. So it's like, this was, I was so lucky. I was like, this is a classic shot, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. like, I have Miss Doubtfire here and, and, and I'll forever, like, I'll never forget this photo because I love it so much. Okay. I've re-edited this, like, this is the most current edit I've had re-edited it like five six times already what makes you decide that it's time to re-edit um were you just not happy with the previous edits or um were you trying to do something different with it that's a good question i think um i'll re-edit something if if i really like the photo i'll always come back and like revisit it and obviously i, I really like this one and i just wanted to give it a more like modern feel of of like where I'm at as as a photographer or slash artist like this is the most current version of it and it's a whole different feel um I I don't have the original one I do have it but I can't find it but if you saw the original edit it looks nothing like this in terms of like ambiance or coloring or anything like it was I made it like super happy and shiny whereas this one is a lot darker it's brighter than my usual ones but it, it's the you can see a lot of more like gray and blues in here yeah so this is one of my favorite ones because 
it's another one of those i was at the right place at the right i didn't even know i got this like i was out there shooting burst mode and then like i, I kind of lifted the shell I was like oh my goodness like this is this stuff it's like another little gem sometimes you just get you know and uh I'm bringing you to Chinatown, San Francisco. This is one of my, the, my most favorite places to shoot is um, Chinatown, San Francisco because of the history behind it. Um, a lot of these buildings are really, really old. And I love alleys. As you can see, like this is an alley shot. Um, and this is one of my, one, one of the most more popular uh, alleys in uh, Chinatown. And what I like most about this is another one is that these two are sharing an umbrella and you don't, I don't know. I just like that aesthetic. Um, it got, and the alley obviously brings a lot of depth here. And um, I don't know, like this, this scene here, it, this photo just makes me happy when I look at it. And that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. I'll also like, um, just like the contrasty colors here, you get, you know, like some greens, reds. Um, I don't know. I just like it. And I just want to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. And my next one, it's a sunny day in San Francisco. Um, we got the classic cable car here and the main subject here, of course, is this gentleman in his, uh, nice coat, um, I actually saw this guy walking. He like walked past me and I didn't know he was, he was, he went, he would go up the hill. So I just, I followed him for maybe like five minutes. And then he suddenly decided to cross the street. And then I look over and then the cable car is coming down. Like this is a perfect frame right here. His clothes match the colors of the cable. But I was like, I, I have to get the shot here. And then I'm so, I felt so lucky that I actually got in focus because he was walking, obviously, the, the cable car's coming, like it's a lot happening at once. I was like, oh my goodness, right? I probably took like 40 shots of him and this is <clears throat> like the best one that, in terms of timing and sharpness, like, I love it. This was with either my 50 millimeter or 85, I can't remember, but also shot wide open for that extreme depth here because in a in a busy scene like you could tell like a lot of people here if i want to isolate them like you need that depth or, or else if everything was flat in my opinion it would just look too busy like you wouldn't know what what i'm trying to portray to you at all so you need that separation in my opinion for street photography it's almost it's they're all like to me like candid portraits almost mm -hmm. unless you want to capture an environmental one like some of the ones that i showed you earlier but a lot of times I'll, I'll single somebody out if I like, and I really liked his outfit too. Like, like that jacket looks super soft, like <laughs> it's nice. Like he's flow, it's like flowing. It was a little windy, but it wasn't flowing in this photo. But then the other ones, like you could see it kind of flow. It brings a lot of character in my opinion. One of the things that I like particularly about this photo is that the colors go from his coat to the, the, the street divider line to the cable car to that building on the far left. Um, it's just that one continuous motion of color. Um, it, it just, it, it really, it, it's not just a photo of someone crossing the street. It's like, it's almost like he had um, like a prop. You, you had him yeah, like color like coordinated, right? Um, so I uh, Susan, Susan uh, made a funny in here. She says that you seem very lucky where traffic's concerned. So yeah, I'm dodging cars all the time. Um, <laughs> people are yelling at like, especially the cab drivers here. They're super, they're super, super mean and rude. Like they would literally like pull up next to me, roll down the window and say some, some bullshit to me and like drive away. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. But, it is what it is like that's just part of the territory when when you're out there you know in the streets yeah and the last one that i wanted to share with you guys whoops is another alley shot um this one i was this one was actually is memorable to me because um it was my first time shooting alone in the rain 
by myself. Usually I'll have like one person with me just in case, like you always need like somebody to kind of watch your back, <laughs> especially with San Francisco because um, there's a lot of crime here. Um, I don't know if you, some of you know, and some of you probably don't, but the crime rate here is ridiculous. Like the petty crime, like the robberies, um, especially the car break-ins. Like I had my car broken into a few times and it sucks. And um, I used to work in at a corporate job in downtown San Francisco for about um, almost a decade. And like on lunchtime, like it happened very often, like every week, like there'd be a lot of tourists out there and in broad daylight, like people just get their, their stuff, take like phone snatch out of their hands, purses. Um, even the North Face store that was right next to me, like they would get robbed all the time. And, and, you know, like if you got like expensive camera gear with you and they see it, like it's devastating if you get that stolen. Um, I mean, of, of course it's just material things that can be replaced as long as you're okay. But the most devastating though, is that like, they're not going to be like, Oh, I'm taking all your stuff. By the way, I'm going to give you back your SD card. Like all the shots that you worked so hard for. Um, are gone and that's like in my opinion the absolute worst but this one stood out to me um it's my first time shooting by myself it was like it was like a little adventure like I had to be a lot more aware of my surroundings of course and shooting by yourself in the rain in the streets walking the streets wandering around is a whole it's a crazy crazy vibe I loved it like I was on like my own adventure you know what I mean um, and I really like this because um, alleyway shot got it had, in my opinion, has a lot of depth. The light, like, was shining right down into that alley, as you can see. I mean, of course, I exaggerated a little bit post post production, but I thought everything just fit in like so well, and it was like it's a great memory for me. Like, and I'm sure um, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people like telling me that like this, this photo brings them a lot of emotion. Um, it's mysterious um, because you can't see that the person's face, but like, you know, he's, he's out there just working on something like he's bringing something somewhere. And like always, like you can interpret your own story for the scene that you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are the photos that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, if, if you guys had any other questions for me in regards to anything else that you might've seen, um, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. I think I caught all of them. So um, if anybody has any, this is a good time to add them to the chat. Um, can you talk about post-processing a little bit? Just- Of course. Yeah, what do you use? Um, um, what do you use, how much time do you spend working on a photo? Um, are you, okay. are you so, quick and dirty uh, or do you spend like hours on end? Um, I use, uh, Adobe, uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. And <clears throat> I've cr created these like presets throughout the years. Like it just, the preset itself, like keeps evolving. <laughs> um, you know, I like the base and I always just keep altering it, altering it, altering it as we all grow as, you know, artists and, uh, photographers. So <clears throat> I couldn't say, I can't really say like from start to finish how long it would take because I have the whole time that I've been editing, like I've created this preset and it's like countless, countless hours in there. Right. So let's just say I applied, I slapped my preset on. Mm -hmm to I have like five different ones like one for sunny one for like rain one for night you know one for gloomy days like this one so I mean um whatever I see fit like I'll use that certain preset and those presets taken me years to do uh, years literally to to be where it's at now and so if I just apply that preset and I do like all the little adjustments to it and then I start dodging and burning for shadows, mid-tones, highlights and everything. Like this image probably after the preset took me at least like 45 to 50 minutes because 
um, say for example, like, <clears throat> like this car right here, like we can tell that the light's coming from the top, but so I, I had to make every, I had to brush in like extra shadows here for that contrast. So it's like a lot of zooming in and out and this little details that I don't think anybody else would ever see or care about, mm -hmm. but I care about it. And <clears throat> that's, even this guy's like clothes, like I'll zoom in and you see these wrinkles here, like I'll dodge and burn the highlights and shadows of everything, even the ground here, like all the little wet marks and everything, even the, like the whole thing, like I'll, I'll like brush over with something just to get that kind of ambiance that I like. So typically I would say like 45 minutes to an hour after okay. I put on my own desired preset that I've created. Okay. That answers it. I think that answers Susan's question. She, uh, on this particular photo, she her question was, what did you exaggerate in this photo? And I, th I think that you kind of covered <sighs> that with a little bit of your... Um, you know, I'm going to... Do you guys want to see... Yes. What it looked like before. I was going to ask you. I didn't know how difficult it would be. All right, so, but I room. will have to like. I'm yeah. going to not share my screen. Sure. Gonna, this is the raw image. So, like the, because I'm like waiting for it to go. Like it's all crooked. Like mm -hmm. I'm just as long as like the thing that I want is in focus. I don't really care anymore. Like that's the main concern for me here. So if you could see like it's just all like ugly, right? Mm -hmm. But if you see, like, if you just look at it, like the windows are obviously underexposed right now because I had, because it was just so, it was like pretty bright out there, right? So if I flip it here, <clears throat> you can see, like, I made the background darker. Right. And I lightened up the, the cable car. And now you can see, you can even see these raindrops that are like, some of them are dripping off the cable car, but you can see this man's face now. So I, I, I obviously I, I zoomed in a lot, at like 500% to start marking these little details on his face to bring the shadows out and, and also making it, like you could see, like, look at the wrinkles on this guy's face. Like I had, of course, like I would dodge and burn like the shadows that are supposed to be there, but I would lighten up where the light would actually hit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like you can see all the details on his face. So when you're, um, uh, Jameis' question is, um, when you lighten this photo, especially those windows, are you dodging there? Or are you messing with shadows? How are you accomplishing that? It's, it, I, I do almost, I try out everything. Like I'll mess with the exposure first and then I'll mess with the contrast, highlights, whites, blacks, texture, everything. And then like once, like I kind of figure out what each, how they apply to this specific image. And I'm like, okay, I like the effect of say, like, let's not raise the shadows. I'll, I'll raise like the whiteness. Okay. The white bounce, just the whites of, on you know, that white slider. Sure. It'll bring out like, it should bring out his cheeks because I don't want everything, like all the shadows. Lift. I want those folds on his forehead to show the details. Yeah. Like, it looks like he's, he's just been through things, you know, that's like life, that's experience right there. <laughs> and I obviously, I made the conductor in the middle, like a little darker. It's like, you're, you're not my, you're not, that's the main yeah. subject. So I'll just leave you alone. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of nice, like contrasting that the, the woman on the left, like they're both looking out on different directions. They're both probably thinking about something about life, but they're in, in the same, like, you know, like public transportation, but that's a little story behind it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like, let me come back here. Like, you can still kind of see him, but like, you can barely see it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not detailed enough. Susan's and like, I, yeah, oh, yes. Oh, Susan. sorry, I didn't mean to break your concentration. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yes, I'm glad, I'm happy to answer any questions. Susan's curious, did you consider cropping the shot? Oh, I did crop the shot. It's hard to see that. See, like you can see, I cropped it. Or do you mean like crop it, like as in like all the way into? I I don't know what she means, but I I would assume that she, that that's what she meant was cropping it even tighter. I thought about that, 
but this one like i actually like the whole scene here like mm -hmm. um i like the bridge i like i like this this would be more of an end for me it would be more of an environmental street shot not like a portrait like a street portrait you know like this kind of shows a little bit of everything it kind of like i kind of like to call like my or not call but i like to um i whatever you want to call it i think of my frames as like strips from like a comic book like you know if you come there's like one page and there's like you know like multiple different scenes like i want this to be like one yeah that's how i think of like my work yeah it's weird but i don't know it's kind of nice to like it is like one day i was thinking like i should make like a whole like just a coffee book table of yep. just all the images combined together and i think i'm um even though they're like different times of the day like night or daytime or whatever like if you put them all together on a grid and this is my own opinion that it look it still looks cohesive like no matter what type of like light and time of the day it is like i don't know that's just me but you know hopefully <clears throat> other people might think that as well i i do think that and that's something i think i said earlier is um the shots are very distinct you know the the common theme is yeah it's a, is it maybe a big city maybe it's an alleyway but it's it's still the same thing but the way that you craft your images you have a very um unique um touch on them i mean i think that's just the artist that that you are um Jamin made a comment of how do you have the patience to spend so much time on one image and um, she's curious you don't do you um, do these hand edits for each image on a wedding <laughs> okay so I don't do that for weddings okay. I cannot do that for like client sessions or else I would Perfect. never ever finish. finish right 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 yeah but um but I will say that for um oh well for the first question is how do I have so much is honestly is because um I love it um when I was when I was a lot younger, when I was a kid, I, I liked to draw a lot and I like to draw sketch and color. And I think like, as I got older, like it kind of transitioned into, um, now I don't have to draw anymore. Like I just go take a photo and then like, I kind of use that means the same mentality when it comes to that for, for my, for my, you know, like the images, like you see right here, it's, it's really relaxing for me. Um, it keeps me busy and I don't feel like I'm wasting. I feel like I'm creating something. Yeah. And, um, and like, I get a lot of, not a, I mean, I get messages from people or emails sometimes and you'd be like, you know, especially for this one, they're like, dude, I, I feel a lot of like emotion from here. And like you, like you captured like the essence of a rainy day for mm -hmm. me. And, and no matter what it is like if someone tells me like they feel something from this like i'm super happy with it and that's like the main goal here right mm -hmm. especially with street like you want to feel like you want to feel the story you know like your own story right you can relate to it and <clears throat> so that brings me happiness and i just love i just love doing it it's fun well I, you know I, i'll say this in my closing comment but um when you talk about your photos and you finish, there's a smile that comes to your face before you stop talking. Oh, and for uh, me, that is you, the joy that you get from your work. Um, I can tell this, this is for you. You do this for yourself. Um, and I think that's the best reason to go out and play in the rain and to create images is that you're doing this for yourself. If anybody else likes it, that's a bonus. And yeah. Yeah. Um, like whether or not I share this with people on Instagram or any of that did not exist, like I would still be doing it. Right. Um, so uh, Susan's curious, do you sell any of your street photography? Is that something that people approach you or do you have places that you can market your work? Yes, I, um, I do sell it. Um, I either, I could, I either sell them as like physical prints, canvases. Okay. And what's, um, what's pretty amazing 
um, recently is that you can turn, I don't want to get into this, but I'm just going to say in real general is that you can have your images as NFTs now. Mm-hmm. So yep. um, I, so I've sold, I can't, I'm not going to, I don't know what a lot is, but I've sold a nice little bit of NFT of my images as NFTs. Okay. Sure. And um, so, yes, I do sell them basically. Okay. And they're okay. like, those are like the three ways that I sell them. That's great. And one more, I'm going to answer the wedding thing is that I'll, for the weddings, <clears throat> I create, I recreate from scratch a whole new um, preset. Preset, okay, yeah. For this wedding. Like I set the theme. This is the theme that I want or per the client's request, whatever it is. Like some, a lot of times they don't have the request. You're like, I just like what you do. So just do what you do. And sometimes you're like, I want it dark, like your Instagram photos. I was like, say no more like that's so i'll apply the same thing but just a lot lot less like dodging and burning because it's actually a the whole screen like almost fills them as as is their faces in their body it's not like an environmental thing anymore so it's a lot easier for me Um, all right so please forgive my website has been in development for way too long (laughs) I was gonna get on way to too long. That. I was gonna get on to you about that because I'm like, come uh, so on. Sad. I'm embarrassed to show you guys this, yeah, but like sure. it's 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 it does have a wedding for this one. Like it did not it did not look like that that day, but they wanted the moody things that I do. So I applied that to this. But you know, as I was saying, like it's a lot less like things happening. So I don't need to dodge and burn too much. Yeah. And and it's because it's focused on them, right? So I'll like batch edit and just do really light adjustments, or else I'll never finish, like I said. Right. And this this one is like a campaign I did for a product. Um, I don't even know if I'm allowed, I have been allowed to share this, but it is what it is. <laughs> this is my selfie here that um I really like this one because like you see the, you know, the ducks hanging and the guy in the back doing work. I don't know. I just like it. Um, so a long time ago, I used to do lots of nature like this one right here. This is in Yosemite. Yeah. I did landscapes before. And I just, it did, it, it doesn't like drive me to go out and shoot anymore, but I, I, I would say like, I found like what I love to photograph the most, like my own niche right here. I mean, I don't mind landscapes, but like, if you're going to be like, oh, do you want to go watch a beautiful sunset or go play in the rain and sh- take photos of strangers? I'm like, take me to the rain all day. <laughs> um, so, I mean, um, this one right here was the last landscape. Wow. That is horrible. The last landscape photo that I remember taking was like two years ago. Does that make way falls in Big Sur? And I had the whole place <laughs> to myself. <laughs> and I was scared shitless because I was standing like, it was pure darkness, obviously. And it was like, I was like at the edge of the cliff there. Yeah. And I was just by myself. It was really scary. But then I was just looking at the, the Milky Way and the Astro. I was like, this is totally worth it. And this is the last one that I can, I remember taking like years ago, a couple of years ago. Um, a, a quick question from Susan. Was that handheld? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. This was, on a tripod. Um, this was, that was a nine, I was like, I think 90 second long exposure. Okay. And um, yeah, definitely tripod is needed for these. Yeah. Marion, um, this was a great presentation. Even though you're you're now you're not a Zoom newbie anymore. You're an expert. I know, like you guys have helped me familiarize <laughs> myself with Zoom. All right, let me get you to take down your uh, stop sharing your screen. Yeah, um, I'm going to properly thank you for coming and sharing your work and the, for me the stories behind your work. Um, that that is what is more interesting to me is like, yeah, the shots are pretty, but until you put the personality or put us in that place with you, that photo kind of gets to get a pop of life again outside of being shot. And um, 
I, I truly, truly appreciate you doing this. Um, is there anything you want to, if there's one tip that you can offer, um, okay, me, I'm, I'm not a street photographer. One tip, what would it be? For, for street photography? Maybe urban, mm -hmm. yeah. For street photography is that, just, I know like <laughs> taking photos of strangers, it's very yeah. intimidating and you yeah. never know how they're going to react. Right. But the one tip, like, so I'll show you what I do. I'd be like shooting and they see me, like I'm shooting and they see me shooting. Like sh they think that I'm shooting as well. We're making eye contact now, right? And I'll still take the photo while we're making eye contact. Cause those are the best you get there. You get that like, oh, what the fuck are you looking at face or something? <laughs> those are the best. But then like, I'll put the camera down and I'll just kind of like slide my head and look past them be like, and then they'll feel stupid because they, they, they thought it was. <laughs> but it wasn't but it really was so like it's so satisfying when like we make eye contact they don't, you get that look and then and i kind of just play it off and then and they just like oh shit i was tripping and they just leave it's so satisfying <laughs> so but just don't be afraid to do it because most of the time like you might get yelled at or whatever but they're not going to do anything yeah like yeah. don't be scared if you if you want to do it yeah yeah I'm, I'm always scared so all right with that I'm going to thank you for sharing your Wednesday night with us, um, running through some of your favorite um, new images and, and some from, from a few years ago. That's always fun to, to see the range of work um, that people you know, have in their collections. Um, guys, you can connect with Marion through Instagram at Ma Marion and his website at mallmarion.com. I'll include those links in the, in the show notes um, so you can just click on them to get to his pages. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you next week when Oklahoma-based wildlife photographer Harvey Payne joins us. Until next time, go out and create something beautiful and I hope that we see you again soon. <laughs>